Dear students, I am Dr. Ali Sabur, Professor of Vascular Surgery, the Enchamps Medical School. This recorded presentation will answer why diabetics are more prone to develop foot infections. It is an essential introduction to the face-to-face -face session that will discuss decision-making in foot problems in diabetic patients. By the end of this presentation, you will be able to explain why diabetics are more prone to develop foot infections and ulcers. You'll be able to differentiate between neuropathic and neuroischemic feet, and you will be ready to propose a management plan for a diabetic patient presenting with infected foot ulcer in the face-to-face -face session. Why are diabetics more prone to develop foot ulcers and infections. Several factors may contribute to the diabetic foot problems, and the answer can be summarized in three words. Because of neuropathy and its effects, because of infection susceptibility, and because of ischemia. The rest of the presentation will give more details about these three underlying etiologies. Neuropathy. Diabetic patients develop peripheral neuropathy that affects sensory, motor, and autonomic nerve fibers. Microangiopathy probably predisposes to the peripheral neuropathy affecting sensory, motor, and autonomic nerves. Sensory peripheral neuropathy renders the foot more susceptible to trauma by impairing pain sensation, light touch, proprioception, and hence the patient is less aware of potential injury from ill-fitting footwear and foreign bodies in the shoes. Ulceration and infection in diabetic feet are usually painless and often neglected by the patient. Diabetics have motor neuropathy as well, with imbalanced actions of the small muscles of the foot, distortion of the morphology and the weight-bearing characteristics of the foot occurs. This will share in the development of the characteristic foot deformities in diabetics and the development of what we call hot spots where callosities can form. More discussion about this topic will come later. The combined effect of sensory and motor neuropathy will make the diabetic patient unable to sense pain and will block the natural reflexes that would prevent injury. Helped by deformity, repetitive stress on the insensitive feet will create hot spots where callus can build up. Callus increases the foot pressure by as much as 30%. This is the reason why the callus should be mechanically removed. Diabetic neuropathy affects the autonomic fibers as well. The autonomic nervous system controls the blood vessels, the arterioles and the precapillary sphincters. It controls sweat glands, sebaceous glands of the skin. Autonomic neuropathy causes loss of sweating and loss of sebaceous secretions. The foot becomes dry, fissured and cracked. Nail growth is poor and all gland function is diminished. Autonomic neuropathy disrupts as well the vascular control of skin temperature. Feet of diabetic patients are pink and warm. Arteriovenous communication beneath the skin are opened in diabetic patients, diverting nutrients away. This may explain why damaged tissues in diabetic patients heal poorly even if the injury is minor, and why some ischemic diabetic feet are still pink and warm. Neuropathic affection of the intrinsic foot muscles lead to different deformities. A characteristic clinical 
If weight bearing is continued, exposure of the rarefied bone to more abnormal mechanical stresses will cause more bone damage. Patients with acute Charcot neuropathic osteoarthropathy present with a hot, swollen foot and is commonly mistaken for infection. An acute Charcot foot needs rest with the use of non-weight-bearing orthosis. The inflammation is non-bacterial and unless there is an ulcer or evident recent penetrating trauma, no antibiotic is required. Diabetics are more susceptible to infection. Once skin disruption occurs, crack from a dry skin, minor trauma, or an ulcer, the foot becomes at risk of local infection. Impaired tissue metabolism of glucose and glucose-rich tissue environment favors bacterial growth and spreading of infection. Meanwhile, Diabetics have impaired immune response. They have impaired leukocyte transformation, chemotaxis, and phagocytosis. When infection is established, inflammatory cells in some bacteria elaborate procoagulant substances, which may cause small vessel thrombosis. Clinically, we describe this as septic thrombosis. This is the main cause of progressive tissue necrosis in the non-ischemic foot. The golden rule. Infection should be diagnosed early and treated aggressively. Why are diabetic patients more prone to develop foot ulcers and infection? We already mentioned neuropathy and the resultant deformity, more susceptibility to infection. Number four is ischemia. The fourth component of the answer is concomitant major ischemia that develops in some diabetic patients. Diabetics are more prone to develop atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis affects diabetics in a younger age. The atherosclerotic pattern in diabetics is usually more peripheral. In diabetic patients, the atherosclerosis usually affects the popliteal and the tibial arteries. Clinically, diabetics are more likely to have palpable popliteal pulse with absent pedal pulses. Another commonly affected artery is the superficial femoral artery. In the presence of foot infection associated with chronic ischemia, the limb should be revascularized and infection should be drained. We will discuss the logical sequence in the face-to-face -face session. The basis of successful management of foot ulcer or foot with gangrene in a diabetic patient with or without infection, is to differentiate between two main syndromes. The first is what we call the neuropathic foot, where pedal pulses are intact. There is severe peripheral neuritis, ulcers develop at the site of high mechanical pressure, and gangrene, if present, is the result of infection. On the other hand, the neuroischemic foot, the pedal pulses are absent. Of course, there is always a degree of peripheral neuritis. Ulcers develop in relation to minor trauma or poorly fitting shoes. It occurs commonly at foot margins. Gangrene, if present, is the result of ischemia. An infection accelerates tissue necrosis. Neuropathic versus neuroischemic. Classical foot description. Neuropathic diabetic foot is painless. It is red, warm, with strong pulses, 
with or without the characteristic deformities. Diabetic neuroischemic foot can be seriously ischemic, pulseless, yet sometimes painless, and they are still warm and pink at most of the times. Ischemic atherosclerotic foot without diabetes mellitus, those patients have painful foot, their feet are pale, colder, and of course, without palpable pulses. At the end of the next face-to-face -face session, you should be able to explain how would findings in a clinical examination of a diabetic patient with foot ulcer would affect the management plan. If you are clever enough, you can prepare from now for this answer.